This is your Bible. This is your Bible on psychotherapy. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered, and when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it, and found nothing thereon but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith, and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. <laughs> in Bronze Age Israel the people are represented by two separate but equally important groups, the police who investigate crime and the chief priests who prosecute the offenders. Gang-related crimes are considered especially subversive. The dedicated detectives who investigate them are members of an elite squad known as the Jerusalem Gang Unit. And the owner of the victory saw all that took place and was inspired to file a police report. Then two detectives from the Judea County Gang Task Force came to interview him. There had been a wave of gang-related vandalism in Jerusalem. He said he depended on the fig tree for his living, and they urged him to have his insurance adjuster examine the tree while the damage was still fresh. Then they promised him they'd catch the lowlifes who did this. At the precinct, scribes copied a police composite artist's sketches of Jesus and his posse and disseminated them all over town. That afternoon, a tip from an informant led them to the temple, where Jesus was in a squab with the chief priests and elders, blindsiding them with obtuse riddles and lame parables. The detective said to Judas, This the guy? And Judas said, Yeah. And Jesus said unto Judas, Ace cool, you couldn't even wait till Gethsemane to drop a dime on me? And Judas said, I spent my whole savings preaching the end of the world for you, and now my credit is ruined. Up yours! And they hauled Jesus and his apostles downtown. The nice detective asked Jesus, Aren't your mother and father worried about you? How old are you? Jesus said, 33, what do you care? And the detective said, 33, and still banging. Gotta be tired of the streets. But Jesus said, I come to do my father's business. Five O can kiss my ass. Then the angry detective threw open the door and said, I want five minutes alone with this piece of crap. He stared Jesus down. He said, You a player? Let me see your tats. Jesus said, My body's a temple. What's your beef? He said, I'll tell you what your beef is, punk. Your beef is vandalism, disturbing the peace, vagrancy, and inciting the riot. Jesus said, For a fig tree? You got Nothing on me, pig. Then he threw Jesus against the wall and got right up in his grill. He said, Fig tree! I got multiple witnesses put you in the temple yesterday, spun up like a base head, tearing the place apart. I even got a report of you impersonating a deity. That shit's a capital offense here, my friend. You ain't in juvie. Fig tree! Jesus said, Get your hands off me or I'll call 12 legions of angels down on your ass. The detective said, Give it a shot, asshole. And Jesus invoked his heavenly powers and called for an army of angels. God and the Holy Spirit were watching up in heaven, and God said, Was that the signal? He was supposed to use code Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, but I guess we should go. But the Holy Spirit said, For this? You're gonna let him bleed out and suffocate under his own weight in a crucifixion, but do an evac over a fig tree? And the Lord said, Yeah, you're right. And they changed the channel. Meanwhile, the nice detective pulled the mean detective off. He said, yo, yo, chill out. Let me talk to him. He got Jesus a sandwich and soda and said, mind if I just sit here till the angels get here? Jesus said, whatever, man. And the detective said, ese vato, a guy like you ought to have a wife and family. But Jesus said, unless a man hate his family, he can by no means into the kingdom of heaven. The detective said, see, that's where you're wrong. A family is the kingdom of heaven, man. You can have that. You're a good looking guy, smart. People like you. He said, why'd you trash that guy's tree? What'd he do to you? Jesus said, nothing. I was mad. And then I was trying to show my boys how you could do anything if you just believed. The detective said, that's awesome. But you destroyed someone else's property just to make a point. Now his family's gonna go hungry to pay for your display of omnipotence. You see the problem here, brother? Figs aren't even in season. He looked at the clock and said, What time are those angels supposed to get here? And Jesus wept. He said, My God, why have you forsaken me? He'd lost his swagger. He told the detective that his real father had abandoned him at conception, and he was raised by a milk-toast stepfather who swept his mother's infidelity under the rug. Kids had called him a worthless bastard in school, and it lit a fuse on his obsession to become the most important figure in recorded history. The nice detective wanted to help Jesus, but he'd caused a lot of property damage and he hadn't made any friends among the Pharisees, so he pled out on the temple vandalism charges. But the detective testified on his behalf, and Jesus was sentenced to mandatory counseling and a hundred hours of community service.
The apostles got similar sentences, except for Peter, who maintained he didn't know Jesus. And all charges against Judas were dropped because he'd turned state's evidence, and that put a bitch mark on him for a long time. The fig tree owner decided not to press charges, but his insurance company wouldn't pay out because they determined it was an act of God. So he had to sue Jesus in civil court. But Jesus was low on coin and couldn't pay. In counseling, he faced the hard truth about his involvement in the Trinity Gang, a cartel that demanded full obedience in exchange for not being burned alive forever. And he traded in his gat for a hand and went back to carpentry. That really pissed the Lord off. So when Jesus tried to feed the fig tree owner's family by dividing five loaves and two fishes, God said, you can forget it, because he wasn't down with Jesus' new paradigm. But this only hardened Jesus' resolve. He went back to the streets, preaching about charity and cooperation, but this time without all the cult of personality mumbo-jumbo. He became a hit on the lecture circuit and used the proceeds to plant an orchard for the fig tree owner, and he repaid the elders for the damage he'd caused to the temple. But then he said, if you guys want to get off on people's deep fears of uncertainty and inadequacy? Go ahead, but leave me out of it. And he hooked up with a babe who made his heart beat faster, and they created a little one who thought her dad was to bomb, but not to Messiah. Then all his old apostles and homies surrounded him on the Mount of Olives where he was having a picnic. They said, What happened to you, man? He was gonna be awesome. What do we do now? And Jesus said, I am not your savior. Man up. I'm peacing now. And he spake unto them the Great Commission, saying, Go ye therefore, and be awesome to everyone, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever make each other's lives better. And lo, I am out. Amen. And he took his family and went off to live in peace. <laughs> Thank you.